Have you been looking for more information about living here that you just can't find anywhere? Well, today we're going to go over everything you need to know about living here in Duluth, Minnesota. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss anything. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cody Oakland, a real estate agent here in Duluth, Minnesota. If you're new here and interested in all things Duluth, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you guys are looking to buy or sell a home here in Duluth or the surrounding areas, reach out anytime at the phone number or email on the screen below. I would love to help you out. I love hearing from everybody and it's never too early to start planning your move here. Uh, but first, let's talk a little bit more about Duluth. All right, today we're gonna do a deep dive on the ins and outs of the Duluth, Minnesota area here. And I do want to start today talking first about Lake Superior and what it means to our area. And it might be a big reason why you're moving here. I get a lot of questions on it. Um, and it's really awesome to live next to Lake Superior like we do here. Uh, it does provide a lot of fresh water to the area, but it does do a number of other things as well. So I do want to talk a little bit about those aspects. And one of the first things I do want to talk about is really the views you get here because of Lake Superior. It draws a lot of attention uh, because it's got that ocean-like feel because it's a massive freshwater lake and it's really cool um, for the views because when you're just driving around the area, uh, maybe your house is gonna have a view of the lake. It just kind of depends on what you're doing, but you really just kind of get used to it a little too much sometimes because there's so many amazing views uh, just walking around, driving around and we've really built a lot of the area around Lake Superior. So as you get towards the bottom of the Duluth Hill, you're really gonna see a number of spots that are built around it. And a lot of activities are based around Lake Superior here as well. And, and that could mean like the boating around, fishing, paddle boating, or paddle boarding and uh, jet skiing even on certain parts. You're gonna see a lot of people using it around it, but there's a lot of hiking around it as well. Um, and we've even got uh, an area called Park Point that's really built up about, it's supposed to be the world's longest freshwater sandbar that we have right here in Duluth, Minnesota. And it's supposed to stretch about seven miles. And it's interesting for a number of things. So when you get down to our Canal Park area and you cross the aerial lift bridge, and that's probably, that's kind of the iconic photo you see a lot of Duluth of the hillside and the bridge and Lake Superior. And once you cross that, you get to the Park Point area. And there's um, there's not like a lot of retail over there. Um, there's some stuff, but really it's got some residential homes and then there's two sides of it. So you're gonna have the uh, Bay side as you get uh, in inward, but then the main part is really gonna be the sand beach area along the main body of Lake Superior. And there's, a road system that'll bring it all the way uh, to kind of the airport down there. And then there's a trail system that'll bring you to the end of uh, Park Point. And that's the kind of the Minnesota Point Trail. And it, some of it is gonna be along a maintained path and then it's gonna get pretty sandy on parts. Um, and the kind of the main focus down there, I would say is really the Park Point Park. Um, and that's going to be the main parking lot and field area to access over by the beach house there to use the sand beach area. And there's different spots you can use. You can walk up and down the whole thing as well, which is really cool. Um, you have direct access to Lake Superior on <laughs> stormy days. If you are viewing out there, you'll probably see some surfers if the waves are big enough, which is crazy. Even sometimes in the wintertime, you'll see them out there in the cold, but uh, not for me. <laughs> but there's some really cool pictures and videos of that. Um, so it's really unique to have that. We get a lot of on really nice days and during the summertime, uh, which we'll talk more about this as well, we get a lot of visitors. So you'll see a lot more people in some of the main spots over there. Um, and the boats like to go into a little bay area further down Park Point uh, and park up and just kind of enjoy the area over there. And some other unique aspects uh, of living along Lake Superior and some area that we've built up here that's really cool is the Lake Walk. And it starts down in the Bayfront Canal Park area and runs about eight miles all the way down to the Brighton Beach area um, of Duluth. And what that means is we get a lot of people kind of in that stretch, I would say mainly in that stretch to the Rose Garden area along the Lake Walk where it goes along Lake Superior. Uh, because the whole path won't be along Lake Superior, but you're going to have a, a paved path for a lot of it and some of it will be a little wider with a kind of a wooden 
a plank path and a paved path. So you've got lots of people doing activities, whether they're renting segways, scooters, biking, hiking along it. Um, it's a really great, you've got different access points to Lake Superior there as well, but it's just a great view and a fun walk and there's different points you can jump off and like uh, if you're going from Canal Park, you can go take it to the, the stairway that brings you up to like the Portland Malt Shop or Leaf Erickson Park where they do movies in the park um, or the, a little further up will be the Rose Garden. So just really amazing views, but you can take it for eight miles. And there's a, a, a railroad system that does scenic tours along some of the pathway that isn't going to be far from the path. Um, that's always fun to see too. Um, they only do that for part of the year. But there's a lot going on and that's really a, a big part to living here in Duluth. Now something else that's really interesting about Duluth that you should really know about too is we do get a lot of uh, visitors here. So depending on what events are going on or sometimes the time of year, uh, just because of the scenery here, you will see more people and sometimes in uh, certain spots too, like uh, over by where the lake walk starts and the aerial lift bridge is, that's uh, Canal Park here. And that whole area is really, I would say, kind of the, the main visitor hub of the area. And because of what you get access to, to view Lake Superior and walk along Lake Superior, but also a lot of people like to come here and watch the aerial lift bridge lift up uh, in the nicer months and see ships uh, roam through. Um, so that's that's a lot of fun and even small boats will go through there but we get a lot of bigger ones coming into the the bay here and so that's where you're going to see in a lot of people and we've got restaurants and a, some small business down there as well and then not far from Canal Park um, is right next to it is going to be Bayfront and over there, you're also going to see uh, our movie theater and the Deck Convention Center and the Amsoil Arena and in the aquarium. But uh, also, so all that stuff is right there. The Deck is our main uh, kind of event center here. So we actually have a huge event center. You're going to see a number of different things play out there. Um, they do a lot of conventions, but also some bigger stuff like the wedding show, the home and builder show. Um, and then... Uh, Anybody can go over there for some of that, but they've also got Amsoil Arena where Bulldog Hockey here is a really big deal for the college team uh, at University of Minnesota Duluth. But uh, next to those buildings, you're also gonna see the park area and a concert spot. So they actually host uh, outdoor events in that area as well. So we do a lot of outdoor events when it's nice out. So weather dependent, some stuff does get canceled, of course, uh, when you're doing outdoor, anything outdoors. But um, it's really cool just to be able to hang out down there and enjoy uh, the concerts. Or they'll just do these big vendor uh, festivals. Uh, so you can go from vendor to vendor, whether you're just going for food, artwork, uh, buying any local goods. Uh, people come from all over to sell their stuff as well, not just here in Duluth. Uh, so we get people from all over the Northland. But it really is, uh, Duluth is really the hub of the Northland, I would say, because of the size um, and what we have available to us. Because there's a lot of smaller cities, but Duluth is a good size for what we have available to us here. So keep all that in mind. So really, depending on the time of year, even in winter months, we're going to get additional visitors. So sometimes they host big stuff because of like, um, we get people from all over going to Spirit Mountain. So if you like to ski or snowboard, that's a really big deal here. Uh, they've got a small uh, tubing section as well. And during the summertime, they've got some stuff like a small zip line and Alpine coaster you can utilize. But they also host like uh, the a snow cross. I, I know uh, it's been canceled sometimes, but uh, so we do stuff like that. There's big snowmobiling events. Uh, big fishing events in the summertime and ice fishing events <laughs> so even in winter we have that going on so uh, there's been some even outdoors along Lake Superior when it's been really cold out as we're getting into winter sometimes the temperature doesn't affect all of the events we have going on here and you'll still see people packing in to some of those spots even though uh, they do have you know indoor spots that are <laughs> heated alongside those or heated tents but um, it's really cool to see. We have a really cool community here uh, for that kind of stuff and really uh, a lot of different options as well. But that's why we get so many different people uh, that are visiting 
um, enjoying all the events. All right, now we do talk a lot about the outdoors here and what we have available. That's a really big part of uh, living in the Duluth areas, what we have access to here. And a lot of it for free, which is not the case for other states in certain areas as well. But uh, that's a really big deal here. You know, Duluth itself, the city has over 100 parks, um, including some we already talked about. Not all of them are going to be perfectly maintained with that many parks here. Uh, I wish they were, but uh, there are some bigger parks like we spoke about, like Park Point and kind of the Rose Garden area and uh, certain ones like Hartley, uh, Hartley Park. Um, you're going to see kind of a nature center where they do all sorts of activities and um, some education over there as well. And it's got uh, a lot of maintained pathway. They do cross-country skiing around a lot of different areas here. But uh, uh, that's one of my personal favorites as well as the Hartley Park area. But uh, you're going to see tons of people being active around there. And there's another really cool one uh, not far from there. That starts at the top of the Duluth hillside we'll talk more about in a second but it's called uh, Hawk Ridge and there's a road system that see so if you take that down to Seven Bridges Road you'll go along a number of trail sections and eventually get to kind of the Lester Park area and it's really more of a hiking road you're gonna see a lot of people being active along the the road there um, but it's really cool there's a number of different creeks uh, going along there and different access points and a lot of mountain biking you can do we've got a lot of a really cool mountain bike area here huge trail system um, one of the few in the world uh, that's set up like ours um, that we've been awarded for so that's that's a really cool aspect and a part of the superior hiking trail goes through Duluth it actually goes for hundreds of miles up towards uh, uh, Canada but we actually have 43 miles of it right in Duluth and as you head north you could use uh, more of it they've got their own website with different trail sections you can use so uh, people have done the whole thing but uh, depending on what you're how long you want to hike for or, or whatever you want to do there's different trail sections for you and with the train here it's gonna really vary so uh, in northern Minnesota, we have a lot of hillier terrain as well, so it's not all going to be just this perfectly flat <laughs> trail system, which I think keeps it really interesting. It's a really good workout, and you get awesome views, um, but it's a really big deal just to have that right here in Duluth, and that's not our only trail system. We've got, of course, all the parks and outside of that, other trail systems as well, but um, you're going to find a number of other ways uh, to adventure around here as well. We've got like ATV and side-by-side -side, uh, trail systems um, that are designated for that. And we have a lot of public land you can utilize as well um, for riding around, hiking, uh, or sightseeing, uh, hunting, all that stuff. It just depends. You can go on the state site and check out you know where all these designated areas are. Uh, very cool to have those here, but... Um, uh, we also, you know, we talk a lot about Lake Superior, but we have a ton of different lakes and river areas to adventure around, which is a really, really cool thing here. You can spend years finding all the different spots you want to utilize here. We've got a lot of, so some of the lakes are going to be private only for homeowners to access only, and there's no public access, but we do have a ton of spots where it's just uh, free to uh launch your boat um, not every lake is going to have like a swimming spot or maybe even be one you want to swim in <laughs> but uh, depending on we have a on the DNR website you can check out see you know what the lake depths are what fish are in them different access points um, there's tons within 30 minutes of the area that you can adventure around um, and I'd like I like to go on the the river uh, the river spots uh, kayaking which can be a lot of fun you can of course go on the lakes but uh, it's always fun going on the river for that stuff so there's going to be tons to explore and throughout the year too as the seasons change a little bit uh, it might change how you use them you know as the lakes freeze here you might be maybe you'll go out snowmobiling ice fishing um, so you'll see people out on the lakes uh, but you do want to double check you know what are the ice levels at where are people using it um, so there's a lot of uh, information online about that. So check on that as you're, especially if this is going to be your first winter, we're going to talk more about winter in a little bit, but 
that's a really big deal. So throughout the whole year, you're gonna be able to access a lot of this in different ways. This next topic is a really big one uh, the last couple of years, especially this year. And it's gonna be a really big deal if you're planning on making the move here and purchasing property. And there's a number of different things you need to know about the housing market and just what we have here. And there's a ton of different housing styles here. Um, so we've got a lot of older homes and kind of that 1900 to 1940 time frame. So if you really like the character, there's all sorts of different versions of those you can purchase size wise. Some are fully renovated. If you want something to find to renovate yourself, there's certainly going to be options. It just depends on what's going to work for you and what the general layout size features that you're going for all that stuff. So that's all really important um, to consider ahead of time. But uh, we do have a lot available here and the, the housing styles are one thing and we've got a lot after that as well, of course, from 1950 to 2000, some newer construction as well. Just that's a, there's gonna be certainly less of that. Um, and I, I know that's kind of similar for a lot of areas, but we do have some new construction uh, we don't have those giant uh, new construction uh, developments uh, where all the houses are brand new right next to each other like you tend to see in those bigger bigger cities. Um, and so it's a little more difficult to find some of those and they don't, but then you gotta typically move fast too to go check them out. But uh, with that in mind, if you're looking for like townhomes or condos, we do have some of those as well. Uh, because we're not a huge uh, city, we don't have nearly as many options as you might be used to if you're moving from a bigger city. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Um, usually some of the things that come along with those are going to be like a, an association that takes care of like lawn care and snow removal for you. Uh, we do have, like I said, we do have some, but there's not a necessarily a ton of them. Um, and another really big deal too is of course we have uh, like waterfront property. Maybe you're looking for something with a view of Lake Superior or just kind of a kind of a something with a view of like a valley area. That's really cool, especially in like fall time when the leaves are changing color. Um, we've got a huge rural area around us that you can also purchase country property. So a couple things to keep in mind as you're looking between them. Uh, because we do have a lot of options. It really just depends on what's going to work for you. Um, so if you're looking for something in the city, um, it's really going to depend. You're going to have city utilities like city sewer, city water. Um, our main uh, internet provider for the city of Duluth is uh, Spectrum. And there's other providers around the area depending on where you're at. And it will change out in the rural areas as well. Um, Comfort Systems provides a lot of the utilities other than power. Uh, Minnesota Power is the primary uh, electric uh, power company here in the city of Duluth. And then there's some other ones depending on where you're at as well in the surrounding areas or out in the country. Um, so that's just going to depend on the property you're really looking for. But some, I really do want to point this out uh, as you're looking maybe between um, the city and the country a little bit as well. So the city of Duluth uh, is going to have the Duluth Hillside. Um, it's going to have tons of area above the hill on the, the hillside where it's mostly residential homes and kind of parks and roadways, not really a lot of retail on the hillside. And then down below the hill as well, there's tons of different uh, residential home areas uh, to purchase. And the terrain is a really big deal here because depending on what you want, one, keep in mind is the Duluth hillside may not necessarily affect your property that much. You might just be driving on it a little bit more depending on uh, what you're looking for. Uh, maybe your yard is gonna be perfectly flat. Sometimes it might have a slope. It depends what you're fine with on that as well. And your same for your driveway. It could just be perfectly flat, but getting to and from the house, maybe uh, if you work um, downtown or above the hill and you're on the hillside, you're gonna be doing more driving on the hill. Um, so it just depends on the train setup you're looking for as well. And like, as you get out into the country, you might see properties with like 10, 20 acres. But if you're looking at like the elevation, because we do have hillier terrain and some wetland areas around, it's good to double check all that stuff because you might see 10 acres, but you know, maybe the house is really only on like two to five really usable acres because maybe some of it's swampy or, the elevation really dips. So you just got to watch out for that and it depends what you're looking for. 
maybe you just want that extra space um, for more privacy and you don't actually need 10 acres. So if only part of it's usable, that would be fine. So all these things are going to factor in and something and out in the country, you're going to have septics and wells. Typically, there's certain spots that are kind of a hybrid of city utilities and uh, septic or well. But uh, do keep that in mind as you're looking out in the country. And something that's really cool that's never really been more available than the last couple of years is there's a lot of broadband funding. So you're seeing uh, more internet, uh, high speed internet being placed out in some of these rural areas with uh, uh, fiber. Uh, so that's really cool. It's not everywhere. It really depends. You got to double check every uh, property address you're looking at maybe making a purchase of. So check all that as, uh, as you're kind of thinking about moving here as well. And that's all stuff, you know, when we're looking for a house together, we'll be talking about all of this stuff and the housing market in general that you really have to keep in mind because a lot of areas are experiencing this difficulty is depending on the area, but here it's kind of a seasonal change as well. So keep that in mind for one, because things are starting to slow down a little bit. So as you're starting to look right now, it'll probably be pretty slow for, you know, what's available to make a purchase on for property until the snow starts clearing a little bit, or maybe we get into like March. Usually you'll start to see a little bit of a change coming up. Um, last year it was still pretty slow. It's kind of a roller coaster for a while in springtime, but um, usually springtime is our busiest. And then it kind of goes until right around now. Um, so if you're looking to make a purchase in winter time, uh, if you don't have winter in your area, maybe the housing market just continues on like normal for the most part. That'll be a change uh, if you're looking to make the switch here and buy property because there will be less available. So keep that in your mind as you're making your plans. It doesn't mean the right house won't pop up, but there's certainly less options in winter time than most of the year around here. Um, and and we've been you know struggling like a lot of areas with having enough housing available for everyone looking to make a purchase. It's kind of slowing down a little bit. It's still competitive. Um, so it's really going to depend on the property you're looking at. Um, I've been noticing, you know, certain things getting away with less. So if the house, you know, is really beat up or has a weird layout or something, you know, it, you know, it might not necessarily go into really high multiple bids. It just kind of depends on the situation. Um, and I think a lot of markets because of the interest rate is kind of seeing this, the slowdown a bit. Um, but it's still really competitive. Um, so it's going to depend on really the house and what's going on. All right. And something I get a lot of questions on a lot of people are looking more into is the fact that we have four distinct seasons here. This will definitely be the biggest change for you uh, for everything that comes along with having four distinct seasons like in a real winter. Along with that, if you're coming from an area, maybe you've never lived in a Midwest type area that even gets snow. Maybe you're coming from a climate that's warmer uh, all the time or maybe really hot or maybe you're dealing with hurricanes or wildfires all the time and it's gonna be a little different here. Um, I do wanna to mention too, because we live next to Lake Superior, that is a factor into some of the weather here. Um, the lake effect is a very real thing and it does make the weather a little unpredictable for some stuff, um, which we talk a lot about because, you know, they could be predicting a storm, whether it's a rainstorm, uh, really windy weather it could be a snowstorm. I mean last year there was a snowstorm that was supposed to hit that didn't even hit us even though we, we already had broken the snow record at that point um, but There there was one storm that looked like we were gonna get another six inches that Mostly missed us. So it it is a little unpredictable. Sometimes it'll just push out, you know, like when uh, my wife and I were getting married uh, last year and fall time it was supposed to rain right when we we're supposed to start everything we we're having an outdoor wedding and fortunately everything pushed out for five hours so it was just enough time and then everything started um and so you kind of just got to plan around that stuff um it's nice when it doesn't happen but um doesn't mean you don't have to plan for it and it is uh, living next to lake spirit you know is one of the reasons we get a little bit more snow than some other areas of the state um but it does provide some really unique uh, weather protections too in, this, in the fact that we don't really get tornadoes. It makes the news when we even get a funnel. Um, so definitely check that out. It's really cool. Uh, there's not really 
stuff uh, for that happening here. Um, but I always recommend everyone check out the historical weather when you're looking at making the move here. And since we're um, into November a little bit, we're almost to about mid-November right now. And that's when you're going to start seeing snow start to stick around more and cold temperatures start to stay around more. It's been a little chilly um, and we did get some snow, but it's already it hasn't taken long to melt when we have gotten it the last couple times here in the few week, the last few weeks. Um, but mid-November, you can usually plan on getting more snow and uh, even though fall doesn't come to an end and winter doesn't begin until about the end of December, you will start to see winter-like conditions well before the end of December. Um, and every year is a little different. So this coming winter, uh, it sounds like it's going to be a lot, hopefully a lot easier than last winter. Um, it sounds like we're supposed to get less snow, uh, which is kind of the biggest deal. Well, that remains to be seen, so we'll see. We're just kind of going on some of their predictions right now. But um, January and February tend to be your colder months of the year. Uh, January is supposed to be the coldest month. Um, oddly enough, I didn't think last January is <laughs> that cold compared to normal. Um, the end of December seemed a little more extreme, and that's when we had uh, a lot more snow than we typically get in December as well. In February, you're also going to tend to see some of those colder temps still. Uh, with like the wind chill, that's a really big deal here. And you're going to see all types of uh, snow. So that's going to be part of factoring into your snow removal as well. Um, so like last December, we got a lot of the wet and heavy snow. Um, so there's a lot of moisture in there and everything just weighs down and nothing likes to move as well. So you really got to stay on top of things when it comes to snow removal. Because you also don't want things to ice up. That could be another really big deal. And uh, cold, you know, you're going to see all kinds of temperatures. The bigger temperatures you usually hear stories about are going to involve like uh, a really low like wind chill. Uh, that's when we're getting, you know, 30, 40, 50 below kind of temps. Um, and sometimes it'll extend for a little period of time too. And like in February, you might get a, a week or two of that. Um, so I usually plan some more indoor projects <laughs> around then. Um, but it's... And, and the other big deal too is with daylight savings, depending on, you know, what's going on for you. Sometimes you might be leaving, you know, for work in the dark and then, you know, 5 p.m. rolls around and you might be coming back home, you know, uh, driving home in the dark. So that's just a factor um, to keep in mind as you're looking at living here um, because winter doesn't just last for a month. It does extend for a little period of time. Uh, when it comes to an end, we'll kind of vary. Last year, it, went, it seemed like until the end of April, I think it was, before all the snow was gone. Um, and I've also, you know, it's ended, you know, by the end of March sometimes. So it just varies depending on what we're seeing, um, how much snow we're getting, all that stuff. And then as we get into springtime, a uh, really big deal is going to be as the snow melts, um, you do want to keep an eye on some things as well. And it's really nice because uh, there's still not any bugs out or anything, but as the snow melts and we get more rain in springtime, as the, those things combine, it's gonna get really muddy around here. If we get um, maybe a warmer day like we did last year and it melts a lot at once, you really wanna keep an eye on where, where that water's going. Um, ideally, your house will have you know water trenched away, but sometimes you know maybe you bought an older house and there's no water trenching away yet. Um, it's gotta go somewhere, so we really wanna make sure you keep an eye on that every year. Um, and that's a really good time to catch up on projects as well is before summertime hits, you know, it's a really, I find a good time to catch up. A lot of us do uh, the extra housework so we don't have to do stuff as much in summertime. Um, and once summertime rolls around, you're gonna, every year is a little different for summertime for what kind of, like this year, I, I would say it didn't start nearly as a dry season as a big, turned into. Um, so I was still mowing fairly regularly um, as the grass was growing and trees were growing in. But then it turned into a drier season and um, what comes with that is you know water levels will decrease and you won't be mowing nearly as much. Your grass might be brown. Just kind of depends on how harsh it is, how long it lasts. Um, usually there's some kind of like 
uh, watch out for camp campfires or a campfire restriction of some kind. So it's always good to keep an eye on that stuff. Um, and we can get, you know, hail storms um, here and there. Um, I don't remember any really severe storms compared to uh, two years ago. We had some windier weather. Um, but I would say the biggest deal this past summer was how dry it was. And then uh, eventually, you know, we get started getting more rain as well. And as you get in, and then there's going to be more bugs and everything. But as you get into um, kind of the fall time, the leaves are going to start changing color. And it's really cool outside. That's my favorite time of year where the temperature will vary and gets a little wild. You'll, you'll have really cold days, really warm days shortly after. You just never know. Um, and the leaves change color. It's great scenery, really cool, especially if you go along uh, the North Shore Scenic Route along Lake Superior there. I love taking that route. It doesn't take too long to drive. Great views, um, really everywhere. I know we're not the only place that has that uh, uh, kind of leaf color change, but we are next to Lake Superior. So it's pretty cool for that. And uh, also keep in mind, you know, the bugs will start to go away as you get into fall time as well. But I do get a lot of questions on bugs uh, from if you're moving from a different environment. Um, the biggest question is usually mosquitoes will be around <laughs> anywhere in Minnesota, really the Midwest from what I understand. But um, it's going to be they're going to be worse as you're over by water, like uh, like lakes and swampy areas and out in the country more. You're going to get them in 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 the city still, but they get worse as you get into kind of the. The, the wooded areas. Um, so that's, it also helps to mow your grass and you can spray your lawn and stuff. Uh, that's totally up to kind of what you want and what works for you. But uh, that's, that's usually what I get the most questions on. So summertime, you're gonna have more of that as well. Now, something else to keep in mind that's uh, really incredible for an area this size is what we have available to us for different uh, services, retail options, business services, hospitals, uh, colleges. Um, there's a lot going on here and we're going to do a deeper dive here in just a second. But this will be a big deal if you're moving from a bigger city where you used to having a lot more of everything. Um, that'll probably be a little bit of a change. While we do have a lot here, there's not nearly as much as a bigger city. But on the flip side of that, if you're looking at a really small area where maybe there's just uh, there's not even like main stores, there's just, you know, uh, one small retail store and grocery store. Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe there's just one mechanic shop. So you, um, the issue can be at a really small area that you're waiting on everything or they don't have what you're going to need. So you have to go out of the area or order everything. So for Duluth here, we have a lot of options. Um, now with that in mind, first, uh, I do want to mention our main retail area is really built around the Miller Hill Mall area where there's the mall, you're gonna have different restaurants all around there. You're gonna see Home Depot, uh, Menards, Fleet Farm, uh, Walmart, Target. As you go into the city of Hermantown, you're gonna see some of this stuff. Um, but there's a lot right up Best Buy. It's, there's a lot right there. And some cool changes. Some of this didn't has changed or didn't exist, um, you know, even in the last 20 years. So they've done some really good work. Recently, the mall, you know, they've changed and <laughs> improved the parking lot, which it really needed. There's potholes everywhere. A lot of it is redone now and really nice. It just wasn't fun to drive around before. Um, you know, there's been some, the mall isn't nearly as busy as it used to be, but uh, there's still activity um, and they've been adding on some businesses there and facilities as well. So it's really cool to see uh, there's some new restaurants in the area, uh, Target added on to their store. Um, I'm surprised it took them so long to, but they, it, not that long ago, they did add on to the Target store a little bit and Walmart wasn't always a super Walmart either. So, um, that's been changed over the years, but, um, and some other stuff to keep in mind is we talk a lot about big business here. Um, like Costco was just added. <laughs> that's my favorite store. Uh, I wish we had that years ago, but we're really big on small business too. So you're going to see a lot of stuff here you haven't even heard of, I, I'm guessing, whether it's clothing stores, little retail shops, game shops, um, or just uh, business services. You're going to see a lot of stuff that isn't like a franchise and that's just owned by one person. So as you're looking into all this stuff, whether it's 
contractors, mechanics, all that stuff. There's going to be a lot of different options depending on what you're looking for. Um, and because we have four seasons here, you know, it does affect planning around certain, like, uh, maybe you're renovating your house, depending on what you're doing. You know, the contractors book up a lot. I know that's a problem in a lot of areas, but around here, because of winter, you do have to plan around certain things. So that can factor into how long it takes to do something or when they're going to do it. Uh, because some stuff you, you just can't even do in winter because the ground's frozen or snow's covering everything. So factor all this into your planning as well. And this is all stuff we'll talk about uh, when you're planning to make the move here and buy property and really what makes the most sense for you. Um, but also keep some of this in mind as well. We have two main hospitals here. Uh, you have Essentia who just spent a lot of money, almost a billion dollars on a new facility downtown that looks really nice. I, I think they're all <laughs> scrambling, getting used to where everything is down there, but it looks nice. Um, I've been in there a few times and then you've got uh, St. Luke's as well. And um, they just merged with a different company, but we do have two main hospitals right here, which is really cool. There's a ton of different clinics as, as well, depending on what you need. But um, I think somebody mentioned we have a ton of different dentist offices uh, compared to where they moved from. So that was really interesting. Um, and we also have three uh, colleges or slash universities right here in Duluth and Lake Superior College and University of Minnesota Duluth and that's where I went to college and then uh, St. Scholastica so which is great you don't have to leave the area depending on what you're looking for there are options here locally um, which I think is really amazing and for what we don't have um, you know and music the music scene here is really really cool there's a lot going on um, around town for the arts as well and for what we don't have, what I was going to say is it's not a far drive to different things. Um, so maybe you want to go up the North Shore to like Luton or Grand Marais or over to Ely. Um, you know, it's only a couple hour drive. Same for down to the Twin Cities. You know, we'll make a day trip or a weekend trip down there sometimes just for when it, maybe there's an event going on. Um, or maybe we just need to go to a certain facility or uh, maybe there's a certain store down there. Um, or like the Minnesota State Fair, things like that. It's only two to three hours, depending on what side of town you're going to for the most part. Um, for a lot of our vacations, we'll go down there um, to fly out of that airport. Uh, Duluth does have an airport here locally. It's a regional airport, so there's not a ton of different flights. Most of them are either to Minneapolis Airport or Chicago. Um, sometimes they'll add direct flights to other cities. But um, it's really nice to have here. It's not always the cheapest option, but, you know, it is an option uh, and really nice to have here. Um, but that is what we'll do for vacations a lot of time as well is drive down to the Minneapolis area for parking or go to a hotel over there overnight and then go to the airport. Just kind of depends on what we're planning. This next item I want to talk about just real quick um, because you'll hear a lot of people talking about it is really the construction around here. Now, every area deals with their own construction scenarios and what happens, but because we do have a real winter here and it lasts for a while, it is harsh on the roads. And that's a really big deal around here. So the road condition will vary. I mean, some of the new road work they're doing is awesome. Things are turning out really nice. And then some other spots are gonna have a bunch of potholes or some potholes, and then they'll patch those throughout the year. Um, ideally, <laughs> they'll get patched. Um, I know that's a really big item on everyone's mind uh, as we move forward is how can we re not just patch the roads, but redo them. But just know that as you visit the area, maybe you haven't been here before, is that is going to be part of it because winter is harsh on the roads. So, you know, as winter comes to an end and the road restrictions end and you can have the bigger equipment out on the roads, you're going to start to see in construction immediately as soon as those road restrictions lift. Um, for those areas and the snow's gone and the ground's not frozen anymore so that's going to be a really big deal um, you know every summer that's yeah, always there are tons of detours so um, that's just part of living here and as they do some of this new work it's turned out really nice so hopefully those changes last longer and we don't have to deal with as much um, so we'll see what their plans are moving forward we've got a really big free freeway project that's going to take a couple more years to finish. Um, it's designed to make everything safer 
as you exit certain areas. Um, it's a huge project. Uh, I think everyone's ready for it to be done, but it will be really nice. And um, it's, it's just nice to see all the work we are putting into some of this stuff. Um, but every area deals with their own version of this stuff. But just so you know, kind of when to expect things, we have a lot more as soon as winter ends and just before winter starts. Last but not least today, I do want to talk about the Duluth Hillside. And you've probably seen a ton of uh, pictures and videos on it. And it's a big part of living here. And I just want to really go over a couple of things. We talked a little bit about it because it does provide a lot of views of the area. So that's part of the reason you get a lot of these amazing um, photos and videos of the hillside and Lake Superior. Um, so that's one piece, but you'll hear a lot about it because of uh, sometimes winter driving sometimes. So that is a uh, part of the planning process. So if there's a big snowstorm happening, it do, you know, we have tons of plow trucks and they, they salt the roads and everything, but it doesn't mean, you know, after the plow trucks go through that we things don't ice up or we don't get more snow. So sometimes it's a process and usually on those really slick, slick times, um, when things are icing up, it's a good time to st stay away from those icy spots on the steeper parts of the hill. Um, the steepness will vary. So the hill stretches for a ways, but it doesn't take up all of Duluth like you might read about. There's tons of area above the hill and below it. And sometimes the steepness level of some roads will vary. Um, a lot of what you might read about might be the, uh, the steeper parts, sometimes right above like downtown Duluth um, along Masaba Avenue there. And so just keep that in mind. That'll probably take some getting used to is just winter driving in general. Um, but as things really get slick, sometimes that can be part of it as well. So just uh, watch out for that. But it really just depends on the spot. And like we were talking about, um, you might not even have to deal with it much. A lot of people plan, will be planning well in advance. You know, you're going to know well in advance too if we're getting a snowstorm. So if you need to pick up anything from the store or anything, so you can just kind of hunker down in the house. Um, you're going to know typically well in advance. Well, there you go. There's a lot more information about living here in Duluth, Minnesota. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, share it with a friend, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos about Duluth, Minnesota every week. And as always, if you're looking to buy or sell a home here in Duluth or the surrounding areas, reach out anytime at the phone number or email on the screen below. I would love to help you.